Hello YouTube, welcome to the final video in this Spyware tutorial series. The only thing we're going to be doing is changing our way that we convert the list into a string rather than the, that raw print that just prints out that cryptic two string kind of deal. Uh, we're just going to make a formatted method called pretty print. So that's why we're going to start off in the utility class. There you see our method signature, pretty much just like the raw print, except it's called pretty print, and we're going to do a lot more work. As like the other method, we are only going to need to execute it if it is empty, so same as last time. And we're going to create our standard string builder and insert a new line um, with the self-enclosing break tags, because of course this is an HTML document. Now the fun can finally begin. We're gonna create a uh, boolean array, and we can create about like 256. Uh, size should be good. This is just going to keep track of which key codes have been pressed, and with respect to the shift key, because if we press A once without anything else touching it, that's a lowercase a. But if we hold down the shift key and press A, it'll be a bigger A capitalized letter. Same thing for all the other keyboard, um, all the other keys in the keyboard, like the one shifts, uh, turns into an exclamation point, the four turns into a dollar sign, nine turns into an uh, open parenthesis. So we need to figure out a way that we can keep track of the shift key when it's pressed, and then if we press another key, so that we can actually, when we're converting it into a string, we know which string we should add to the string builder. Should we put uh, a four down or a dollar sign four. Well, we need to keep track of all this. That's what this blue array is going to be used for. Now we're gonna iterate through this list. I mean, this uh, yeah, this list of key storage, and we're going to set the caps at the key code index equal to the key storage is pressed method because we know if it's pressed or not um, when we are adding it to the list in the previous tutorial. So note, make sure your boolean size is big enough to be able to hold all the key codes. Like if your key code is like, I don't know, for some reason if you have a key code that's 312, well then that would be outside the bounds of this array. So make sure that you put bounds checks or you just know for certain that 256 is a big enough number. Um, either way, that's what we're going to need to do. This next line of code is just going to be grabbing the key that the user pressed with respect to the shift key. So I set this equal to a method that I made called process key. This was a very lovely method to make, it took a lot of time. And uh, it takes in the key storage's key code, and it takes in caps at key event dot vk shift. And if that um, part of the array is true at the shift key code, then we know that the key shift is pr is pressed, so it would be true. And we also know that whatever key we did press should be shifted. And that's what the process string method does. It takes in a whole bunch. It takes in those two inputs, and then depending on what the key code is, it will return uh, a character that is matching accordingly. So that this will be able for you to copy and paste in the description. And um, you can add to it if there's more keys I forgot or something. Then it's pretty self-explanatory what you, what you can add on to this. This method only really counts for shifting the numbers like four to dollar sign and bracket to brace. I didn't bother doing the alphabet because we can just make a little A or a big A depending on if our key storage was pressed and the shift key, then we can just call one of Java's built-in string methods key dot to uppercase or key dot to lowercase, and we could just append that to the string builder. You could add A, B, C, D, and add 26, no, like 40 more lines of code if you want to type that out, but I think it's kind of redundant. That's all this if statement does. It just shifts the alphabet by appending a lowercase letter or an uppercase letter to the string builder. That's it. That's 
all this method does really by formatting. Uh, it just shifts the keyboards and gets rid of all that extraneous data that we actually need for the shifting. And uh, so now we can just return whatever the string builder has in it because everything was appended, appended in order. We didn't actually need to have the dates and times of you know, each when each key was pressed, but that might be useful for I don't know if you want to like know when someone said something, then probably not useful, but hey, it might be later. Don't forget to head into the other class, into the manage service class, and inside that loop, you can change utils dot raw print to utils dot pretty print or whatever you named it. Put in the new one. Now all we have to do is uh, test out this new, our new changes. So I'm just gonna delete what we had from the previous tutorial and start typing other things. So we have a, a say in capital S, and we have a, a little apostrophe, and I'm just gonna test out some capitalized letters and symbols in an example. Dot dot dot. And then dollar sign, J4, uh, other symbols, and now we can go to the browser and see what we have. Got to switch out of my personal account, go into this junk bot, and you can see there the email is. Nice and formatted, not cryptic whatsoever at all. It looks really nice. Just look at that. You can even see that it keeps the backspaces, so we know how many times we went back because I messed up and I was spelling I'm or something, can't remember, but obviously I messed up and then changed it to an ing. And you can see each backspace moves it back one character because I spelt typing with E. Thanks for watching, that's it for this tutorial series. If you have any other suggestions, I'll happily make some. Uh, if you want to see more, support my Patreon channel or account, whatever, you can donate cash, and I'll see you can hear me next time.